What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and the future is now. We finally have PS2 games running well on an Android phone. That's right, it's finally happened. We're here, F5 on the card angle. And before I even get started, there are two important things that legally I must mention. Number one, you're going to need a PS2 and dump the BIOS. Number two, you will need the game involved and rip the ISO. And if you don't know how to do those two things, you are on the internet, the information is out there, go start learning. Then you will download Aether SX2, link in the description, to get started on running PS2 games on your phone. Now this is running on a Samsung Galaxy S21. The minimum requirements recommended for running this emulator is a Snapdragon 845, so a 2018 flagship phone or newer is what you will need. Some phones that use the 845 include the Galaxy S9, the Pixel 3, and the OnePlus 6. But this Galaxy S21 has a Snapdragon 888 under the hood. It is a flagship phone and this Aether SX2 is based on PC SX2, an all-time great PS2 PC emulator, so all of the hacks, compatibility, patches, etc, etc, are all supported here on this deal. But, I should mention, it is still in alpha. And so let's relaunch. Here comes the pain. You will notice in between the start and select buttons, a button that will change your analog stick into a D-pad for games that require that, but more importantly, if you have a Bluetooth controller, as soon as you connect that controller, the on-screen controls go away, because you have a controller to play with on this thing, and that makes things way much better, way much easier. Now, I've turned on, in the upper right-hand corner, you will see the percentage of how the game is running at. Welcome, my friends, to Here Comes the Pain playing it on my phone. I'm gonna hop in here real quick to show how the entrances do slide on a little bit, but the actual in-game gameplay is fine and runs at 100%. So just real quick here, The Rock and Brock Lesnar just hopping in to a match on SmackDown, obviously a brand new save file here. And so the thing is, I can, much like PCSX2, I can increase the internal resolution and make the game look better. But in the entrance here, you see it dips down under 100%. You can also turn off the frame limiter, which is insane, because it runs way faster in the matches themselves. Obviously, de depending on the speed of your phone and such. So, But once you're in the gameplay, it's that here comes the pain that you know and love. All-time classic, Spine on the Pine, running at 100%. Now, of course, options here are what you want when it comes to escaping. But also, options are what you want when it comes to the visuals and other type of things, right? And so with the on-screen controls, I can now hit pause. I can head over here into the options menu, and we can see some options for this emulator. If I disable the frame limit, it will run as fast as possible, which is 270% uh, speed on that. You really don't want that for this kind of game. We'll put that back on and enable that frame limit. But we have enabling game fixes. We have the fast boot past the BIOS. We have patch codes. We have the screen orientation. We have expanding to the cutout area graphics. I can change between rendering types. We have OpenGL, Software, and Vulkan but also the upscale multiplier. So I can hit 2x, and then back into the game, the game looks better. The game looks smoother, and it's still running 100%. But of course, if you want to push it beyond where it should be going, you can go back into graphics and say, I want to go to a 8x upscale. Guess what? It's not going to run good. It's going to look amazing. It's going to run at half the speed with that 8x upscale, which is still, for a phone, running a PS2 game, is nuts. And yes, for folks that don't understand that old games should be in 4.3, you can change it and stretch it and make it look terrible. You can do that. You shouldn't do that, but you can do that. And have the whole screen be filled with this 16.9 stretched garbage. But there were PS2 games that did support 16.9. If you wanted to play Gran Turismo 4 in a proper 16.9 format, 
in 480 or 1080i, that option is here for you to do on the phone. So we're gonna hit OK, and we can head to the world famous Nurburgring in Gran Turismo 4 in 16.9. Obviously, my phone is bigger than a 16.9 thing, but 16.9 proper here in this game. Get ready to drive. We're ready to drive, and I am back on that 1x. So it's kind of dipping here a little bit, and start. And fix my camera. Where's the camera? Where's the... Oh, God. Oh, God. I haven't played this game in forever. It's been a hot second. What is... There it is. There it is. So, Gran Turismo 4 on a PS2 not running at 100%. Again, this emulator is alpha. It's going to take a little bit to get to where it needs to be. But what it's currently doing is pretty freaking impressive, if you ask me. Yeah. Now, of course, some games you're not going to want to play with the touchscreen controls, right? You're going to want to play with an actual controller because trying to actually do this on a touchscreen uh, is a nightmare. And I'm terrible at Tekken, so there's that. But yes, this runs pretty good. Not perfect, but again, it's an alpha, and I'm hoping at some point it will get there. But for what it is right now, it is the best PS2 emulator on the Android phone, period. Here is Metal Slug running at 4X, still 100% looking crisp and smooth on this Android phone. So there you go with that. And also I just died because I have not played this game in forever and I gotta get used to how things operate here. Help! I don't know how to help you, I'm sorry. Chicken, good. Now when it comes to other options you can kind of tinker with here in this emulator. You've got underclocking, you have multi-thread. If you don't have a four core SOC in your phone, don't use multi-thread. You got speed controls, you got advanced options here. Back into graphics, we kind of covered some of that here, but aspect ratio, V-Sync, integer scaler, upscaling, FXAA, TV shader, you know, the kind of options you would have thought were all in PC SX2 are here in this one as well. And man, you can kind of tinker to get it just right in those games. You got your audio options here. And even over in the advanced, which I don't ever touch the advanced because I am not that smart when it comes to working with this stuff because I just want it to work and not break things because I have a tendency to break things. Aether SX2 is out on the Google Play Store in an alpha. The link is in the description. I'm going to go up these stairs here in, in Clock Tower 3, one of my all-time favorite horror games, and see what there is to see with these awkward on-screen controls. Again, use a controller. There's a lot going on here, and uh, it will be very difficult to do it all with an on-screen D-pad. It's not, not the best. But hey, if that's your thing, then have fun. I am a tax slug. This thing's pretty cool. I'll see you next time, right here, more videos, and I'm out.